Yeah, I think um, it lets you hit driver, first and foremost. I think there's a lot of courses we play nowadays where a lot of fairways pinch in at 300, 310. Um, that doesn't allow the, the long hitters to, to hit driver a lot. Um, last week being a pretty good example of that. So whenever you get a big golf course like this that allows the you know the big hitters to hit driver, you know that's usually a, a, a big advantage. So um, yeah, it's just nice to, to get driver in your hand and be able to feel like you can can let it fly a bit. Did that at 16, but then you were able to reach the green and make it eagle there. Was that the new three wood that you hit uh, in the European? Uh, new old three wood. It's actually the three wood I used last year. So um, it's actually. You know, I, I, actually, I went home, I went down to Florida after uh, Northern Trust on Monday night, um, went into the, the garage and rummaged through a, a few different things, got my old putter back out, got my old three wood, brought a few shafts up, tried different shafts in the driver, went to a new shaft in the driver, um, and yeah, it seemed to work out today. Yeah, it's, you know, especially the way I've been playing the par fives. I've played the par fives very poorly the last few weeks. Um, and even the front nine today, not making birdie on either of the par fives on the front side. Uh, I was sort of thinking, here we go again. But you know, it was nice to play the par fives better on the back. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay. So you're 13 of 14 fairways today, third and strokes gained putting. I know you mentioned that you've been doing some tinkering, but how much is this due to tinkering and, and working on the technique and the golf swing, and how much is it due to maybe uh, liking this golf course? Yeah, so I think it's a combination of all of those things. Um, it's not as if I was driving the ball badly. Like I just had a driver I felt was spinning a little too much, so a couple of times last week into the wind, I'd hit it and it would balloon up in the air, and then if I wanted to try to hit a cut off the tee, I was not comfortable doing it because I felt like I was just losing too much distance by, by hitting the cut. So getting a driver that just spins a little less um, just makes it more comfortable for me to aim up the left side and peel it off if I, if I want to. Uh, and then the putter, um, sort of, it's funny, I, I thought about it. I, I said to Harry after the first round last week, I'm thinking about going back to the spider. And then I proceeded to gain four strokes on the greens over the next two days uh, with the blade. But I think the thing with the blade is I, the good days are really good, but the bad days are pretty bad as well. There's quite a lot of inconsistency in it with, for me. And it's almost like I need to practice with the blade at home to, you know, because you have to get your stroke spot on to, to hit good putts with, with that style of putter. Mm -hmm. But then when I come out here, you know, I, I started hitting, you know, hitting putts with the spider again, and it felt so easy. It felt like I couldn't not started online so you know it, it was sort of there's a lesson in there somewhere about maybe just keeping the blade at home and practicing with it and then you know coming out here and putting with something that's got a little more technology in it yeah uh, we talked a lot this week about fatigue tiredness crazy season does that free you up a bit with your mentality when you come out here i think so i mean it's not um you know i've went through playoff stretches before where you're always in that lead grip you're either one two or three in the FedEx Cup and that you know that can sort of take its mental toll over the over the few weeks where I'm in a position where I just geez I need to play well just to play next week so there is an element of freewheeling I guess um and the energy thing look I like I was super tired yesterday and you know but it's you know you get a good night's sleep and you feel a bit better the next day and you can go out and play well so you know another good night's sleep tonight and you know get up get back out on the golf course and Try to do the same stuff that I did today. Awesome. Rory, in, in certain parts of the country at this time of the year, it's just not going to be able to be firm. It's always going to be soft at every yeah, course. Yeah, yeah. What's your perspective on what would make a good playoff? Is it one, a, a thing where everybody has to go out and get it and guys got to shoot 65 to keep up? Or is it something where, you know, maybe grinding would be, you know, a little bit more indicative? Like, what's your perspective on that? Um, so I think if you re rewind it back 12 months to this tournament last year at Olympia Fields, that was a little more of a grind. They were able to get the golf course firm, rough was up, um, and the scoring, it was, you know, it was really tough. So, yeah, look, it is, it's an area of the country here where it does get hot and humid and bent grass, it just doesn't, you know, it's not gonna, it's not gonna have the characteristics that you want to, to have a really challenging golf course, but, um, I don't really know where you could go this time of the year where that's not going to happen without it being, you know, like over on the West Coast or Northeast or Northwest or whatever it is. So, 
Um, I think is, you know, I certainly think the FedEx Cup playoffs are different than the majors in terms of the, um, like the tour is a, this is going to sound a little, not bad, but I think it's more of an entertainment product rather than a, you know, than the majors are. The majors are, you know, set up a little bit differently and they're supposed to be the toughest tests that we face all year. And, um, it's a little bit different. I mean, a lot of the golf courses we play are uniform and, you know, you get the same conditions each and every week and players like that. I like that. I like that you don't have to come and spend three or four days at a golf course learning it every week. And if you're playing week to week to have setups like this is, is a good thing. What's your uh, club stash look like at the house? I mean, how many clubs are we talking about? I mean, is this like a, going into a PGA no, Tour No, no, not at all. Um, I basically I have from 2014 onwards, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff I just give away or um, give back. But I don't. I'm not a hoarder. I don't. You know, I, I keep a bunch of you know, shafts that I've tried over the years and, you know, a bunch of stuff. I have a couple of sets of irons that I've won majors with and that sort of stuff. But, um, but yeah, there is. I mean, I've got a few things in there and every so often something catches your eye. You're like, oh, I remember that or like to try that again. But um, in terms of what I can actually play with, um, like current product, I don't, I don't have that much. I, I sort of try to keep it to a minimum because... I know if I have too much stuff, I'll just start to tinker, and that's not a good thing. So, you, so you, just the driver, three-wood, and putter you switched out this week? Yeah, yeah. Rory, thank you. Thank you.